One of the most exciting books I probably own is this 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die. This is actually the edition that was released in, I believe this is 2013, maybe? Um, because I think... Yep, there it is, 2013. Because I believe when you get to the end... I think this is the edition that has films from 2012. Yeah, so we got Skyfall, Lincoln, Django Unchained, uh, Life of Pi. Which, you know, in some of these movies, you gotta wonder, like, you know, I, I do love Skyfall. But to have that in here versus, like, so many other movies, uh, same with, like, Lincoln, Life of Pi. You know, it's just, you gotta wonder, like, how many of these movies get included like Argo's in here and I love Argo too but it's like it, what, what, really like of all the other there's like a lot of movies from 2012 that end up in here as well even though these are the most recent films like Les Miserables like this should not be in there <laughs> and um I wonder what like future editions if they end up taking these out pretty quick um I never even saw more um but yeah anyways it's uh I don't know exactly where they decide the criteria for the films that end up in here, but with some of the more recent films, it kind of has that same bias of, like, I think it's just because they're so recent that they feel the need to put them in here. Um, oh, like, oh, this is so good, it's got to be in here. Now, now, Tree of Life. Now, what's crazy about this movie is the thing I always remember is that Roger Ebert, one of the last lists that he did of the top uh, 10 movies of all time, he would do it every uh, 10 years for sight and sound and he listed tree of life in his top 10 movies of all time i think the list was done in like 2012 the movie is very recent and he literally threw it in there so like that's how good he says this movie is i've still never seen it but i've always meant to just because of that but it ends up on this list um there's a separation there's another one i've always wanted to check out uh, I i'm going backwards just because these are the movies that people probably have a better idea of yeah this is a great movie um Inception is good, and uh, King's Speech is another one where it's like, I kind of wonder if this needs to be in here, other than the fact that oh, it won Best Picture. Uh, Black Swan, definitely gotta give that another watch sometime. Uh, but there ends up being a lot of, you know, foreign movies in here, uh, but a lot of stuff that people have seen, you know, Dark Knight. So, it's a, it's a pretty cool list. Um, there's a great video online where they basically try to showcase as many of these movies as possible. Sometimes they do kind of make exceptions to the rule, like The Lord of the Rings. The entire movies are grouped together. They do that for Toy Story as well once we get to it. Um, but, yeah, there's a great video on YouTube that uh, has a bunch of these in, like, a montage. There's the Toy Story trilogy. And that is one of the best, like, movie montages I've ever seen. And uh, Clueless is in here. Uh, but anyway... Um, I used to be pretty good at just heading into this book right away and, uh, you know, uh, marking off whatever I've watched. Um, I've never gotten the newer edition because, like, now with the fact that I have Letterbox, I just don't see the reason of, like, updating, getting the book, you know, because, because why? Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, it's gone now, but, uh, Stanley Kubrick's film Frenzy is in here. Uh, where is this? This is, uh, this one movie that's in here. I, oh wait, that might've been Shaft actually. Yeah, it's Shaft. There's another, oh, it's actually right here. What am I talking about? Um, this has the coolest title of ever. Uh, Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song. I had to watch this movie in school and that is the coolest title for any movie ever. <laughs> um, but anyway, I don't see the reason to like keep updating this. This is a freaky ass movie to me it's like not a horror movie but it's just like it gives me freaky vibes i don't know how to explain it but it's just fr freaky vibes i definitely got to give this movie another watch it's been way too many years but anyway i just don't see a, the point in getting the new book because you know it's like i i have letterbox now and there's some pretty good lists on there that not only compile everything that's in the 1001 movies list but it also compiles movies that were taken off the list um which i think is great uh they add like every edition that's ever existed and they just compile them all together in one list so anything that is cut out because movies will be removed they don't go over a thousand and one with the exception of some of the trilogies they put on here they don't go over a thousand and one so they actually have to take some movies off when they add some uh but i have them all marked off here so as you can see from this 
it really isn't as many as you would expect. You know, for having so many movies in here, you got to think, like, you really haven't seen even, like, you think there would just be way more marks. But the thing is, is, like, and I think I've seen online the percentage I have on, like, Letterboxd, which includes some of the movies that have been taken off over the years and added with the newer editions. But I think I had, like, a 25% watch rate. You got to remember, there's a lot of foreign movies in here. There's a lot of older movies, and there's a lot of movies that, you know, it's... it's For instance, I mean, I, I love franchises. I like... You know, I've seen all the Star Trek movies. I've seen all the Star Wars movies. That's, like, so many movies right there. But they don't have hardly any of those on here they only have like the one star wars movie on here so um not gonna really keep up you know and that's actually a lie they actually have empire strikes back and i believe return of the jedi is on here as well um but anyway the point is that you know it's just gonna be tough because like a lot of these i just you know it'd be great to see them but it's a matter of getting access to seeing them and then you know there's just always other movies that i want to watch um so I'm trying to go through here, and you know, sometimes you gotta watch yourself. That that may say Beauty and the Beast, but that's actually the uh, the classic Beauty and the Beast, not the animated film, which is, I believe, actually it's not on the list. Um, that shocks me. See, that's one where it should be on it, but it's funny that Beverly Hills Cop is on here. Um, so there's Ben Hur, which um, I have seen Ben Hur recently, so I can actually mark that off, and that's what I mean. I just there's some movies on here that I have seen. And I haven't marked off in a long time. So I have 39 steps. Have seen that now. Um, let's just kind of go through this. Because, you know, maybe looking through my camera will actually help. Um, I've always wanted to see The Adventures of Robin Hood and uh, The African Queen. I've, I've always wanted to see those two. Um, I don't own them, though. I do own All Quiet on the Western Front, though. So I will be seeing that soon. And then there's one. All the President's Men. And of course, you know, it looks weird because I'm losing my spot. But because, I, you know, looking at it through the camera versus looking at it in person is... It's, uh, it messes with my brain. I've not seen an American Werewolf in London or American Graffiti. Or Amadeus. So, I know. Come and slap me. <laughs> um, I really want to see Anatomy of a Murder. The only reason I keep passing up on it is because every time I really want to watch it, I think about that runtime, And I'm like, I really just got to take a day to pay attention to this um man i really haven't looked at this list in a long time just because you know I'm, I'm addicted to letterbox now letterbox is really just the way to go i don't you know i don't necessarily need this anymore but there is something really cool about the write-ups every time um you know like i said it hasn't i haven't done it recently but um used to be when i would watch the movies i would actually read about the said movie and there's a lot of really good write-ups in here. So for that, there's a real good reason to own the book. But, you know, now with Letterboxd, it's way easier to catalog all these. Okay, I have seen Bringing Up Baby. I I feel like I saw Brokeback Mountain years ago, but, you know, I can't remember it. So I'm, I'm not going to mark it down. I don't like to mark them down if I've seen them as a kid because I feel like that doesn't count. Um, God, there's just... It's almost embarrassing going through this because it's like there's just so many that I haven't seen and it makes me feel like, what am I doing? I mean, really, what am I doing? <laughs> I want to see the color purple. Uh, I have seen Clueless. Yeah, I might end up, I, I don't know if I should be going through the entire list just because this could go on for quite a while, but... I'm enjoying myself right now. I thought Dawn of the Dead was on this list. I'm... Yeah, there it is. And I do own that movie now, so I will be watching that very soon. Looking forward to that. Um... Yeah, I can't think of... Detour is a great film, by the way. Um, if you ever get a chance to see it. Die Hard is also very good. I own Dirty Harry, so I should probably just watch the thing already. Um... Okay, so there's another one I have seen. That. I haven't seen Downfall. But I've seen... Wait, did I see... Yeah, I did see Duck Soup. I don't know why I threw... I, I, I was confusing that with A Night at the Opera, but I've seen Duck Soup. Um, Marx Brothers. <laughs> I gotta check out more of their movies. And see, this is where some of the accidents happen. So... 
a lot of the movies that have like the titles like the foreign title and the english title they have it listed in the book twice even though it's like they're the same movie um so that i think was just a mistake on the creator's part because i think if you count these all up there's gonna be more than a thousand and one movies uh for sure unless they only i mean but no they they didn't do that because oh they're different movies like they're they're not <laughs> but they don't list the movies in the book twice anyway so it doesn't even matter like so no matter what it's just it was just a mistake i do own footlight parade so i should give that a watch oh man I just really, and you know, it's like a, it, it's kind of sad because like a, looking through this, there's a lot of these movies that I actually do own. A lot of the classic ones. Um, there's another, Gamora and Gamora. It's it's the same movie but different language titles. So, um, and I feel like even if I'm going through all of these, there's probably some that I have seen that I'm just like forgetting that I've seen. Um, not because I forgot about the movie, but because if I just see the title, for some reason, that doesn't tip me off right away when I'm reading so many titles all at once. Um, I have seen The Hurt Locker. And, um, by the way, this pen right here, this is just some piece of crap pen, but I've had this pen ever since I've had this book. It's never ran out of ink. Um, so I'm kind of... Uh, I like that because I'm able to same use the exact same pen, so everything kind of has some... They correlate, you know, the color correlates, the width of the pen correlates with the others. Um, I appreciate it for that. I got to see The King of Comedy, by the way. I meant to see The King of Comedy when Joker came out, and I never got to it. All these movies will start with uh, La. I have not seen any of these. <laughs> The Lady Vanishes. I have seen that now. Oh, man. Some of these I might want to go back and actually read about the movie and see what they have written up in here. You know, and it's funny because it's like people always want to just point out the movies you haven't seen without looking at the fact that, you know, there's actually quite a few that I have seen. And, you know, these would be the ones that you would question me about um, as to, you know, oh, why haven't you seen them yet? If you go through this, you realize, um, I've seen all these other movies, though. So, the same ones that you would call me out on. So, you know what? Um, I'm not going to feel bad about it. Ah, the Man of Iron. I always think that says The Man in the Iron Mask, which is a great movie, but it's not on here. I don't know if I should call it great. I mean, I like it. The original Manhunter is on here, but not Red Dragon. Mean Streets is on here. Um, by the way, I, when I mention Red Dragon, I, I don't mean that Red Dragon should be in this book. <laughs> I mean that it's not in this book, and that's it. I don't think it should be in the book. Uh, I've seen The Naked Gun. Um, I've seen Natural Born Killers. So that's the thing. There are quite a few movies I've seen since um since cracking this book open in a long time by the way so i mark both nosferatu since it has the german title and it has the original uh the english title here as well and then they got the other nosferatu in here which is the warner herzog film and then they got uh both of those titles here as well so it's just like what the hell um, not the 90s Nutty Professor, by the way, so don't mark that. One of the ways you could tell is just by the book. You know, it doesn't have the years here, which, you know, that's the one thing I, I wish this book would have done. Uh, but it at least puts the page number, so you get an idea just based on the page number where it would appear in the book and how far that would be. Um, Once Upon a Time in America, Once Upon a Time in China, Once Upon a Time in the West. I wonder if they added Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You know, it, they got movies on here like Ordinary People. So I'm beginning to think that they just literally added every single um, Oscar winner on here. <laughs> regardless of the actual quality of the film. Because uh, Ordinary People is one of the uh, more controversial um, winners of Best Picture. Because when you compare it to what came out that year, I think it was like competing against... 
like Empire Strikes Back came out that year. The Shining came out that year. Um, a bunch of those movies came out. There was a lot of movies. It was 1980, so there was just like a bunch of movies that came out. As I say that now, I'm wondering if that... It, it was 1980, correct? Actually, I'll just... look. So, so you got to be an idiot and flip through the pages to find the spot to see... Yes, 1980. Directed by Robert Redford. Which is probably the only reason why it won Best Picture. I mean, I don't know. I shouldn't talk crap. I haven't seen it. But it's like, come on. Uh, 1980 was a pretty stacked year. You're telling me Ordinary People, a movie that they don't even feel should have a Blu-ray release yet, for some reason is the winner of Best Picture that year. Yeah, I don't know about that. I have seen Rational Man. Um, geez, this is just... I've seen Requiem for a Dream. And I do have Return of the Jedi in here, by the way. Uh, still have to watch the right stuff. Rio Bravo, but I have not seen Rio Grande. But I have seen Roman Holiday. But not Rosemary's Baby. I have a list on Letterboxd called uh, Top 10 Movies. Or no, it wasn't even that. Uh, it's just 10 movies that I update every time I watch one of them. But the name of the list is... Uh, no, I haven't seen it. And it's just 10 movies that I famously haven't seen. And on there is movies like On the Waterfront, Akira, um, Ex Machina, Rosemary's Baby, Dawn of the Dead, Anatomy of a Murder. I, I mentioned some of those during this video. So, like, I am planning on watching them. Some of those movies I even own now. But, again, it's a matter of just getting to them just watching them finally and you know getting to them <laughs> um some like it hot i have seen that and my phone is starting to die but i am going to try to get through this before it's over i have seen spartacus i've not seen the original star is born and that actually might be the judy garland one uh Trying to just base it on that page number. By the way, I have seen Stagecoach. Um, based on the fact that Stagecoach is in 146, but A Star is Born at, is at 287, I'm going to guess it's that, that's the Judy Garland one, not the original. The original original. The, you know, the one that I don't think a lot of people remember original. <laughs> um, ooh, A Streetcar Named Desire. I do own that movie now, so I'm going to have to give that a watch. A sweet smell of success. Wait a minute. Is that like the... Oh, no. I was thinking of a movie called The Secret of My Success that has Michael J. Fox. I was like, there's no way that that movie's on this list. But then I was thinking, maybe they remade it with Michael J. Fox, but no. Nah. <laughs> Ooh, To Be or Not To Be. That is a great, 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 really funny movie. Very ahead of its time. I've never seen Tootsie. Um, no, I didn't see Total Recall. I well, I feel like I did, but... God, I can't even... I, I don't know. I, I know so much about that movie, but I don't know if I've ever actually seen the full thing. Now I'm starting to question it. I can't remember if I did watch it recently. I'll have to check my letterbox, but that, the only reason I'm questioning that is because I've saw so many reviews of the movie before I've ever even seen it that I feel like I've seen the whole movie. Uh, so possibly, maybe I never did see it, actually. Um, again, another issue. They have the vampire and vampire on here, so... <laughs> ah, I wish they would have fixed that when they released this. Ooh, Wages of Fear. I read the plot of that movie, and it was, like, such an interest. Not the whole... The synopsis. I didn't read the whole plot, but... Um, that seems like a very, very interesting movie. And definitely want to give it a watch. Uh, I have seen Wild Strawberries. Yeah, I've seen some random Ingmar Bergman films. Um... I have seen The Wrong Man. 
See, and that's the thing. Just looking at the title, I'm like, if I don't have a title to a poster, I can't, like, think for some reason that, oh, wait, I have seen this. <laughs> I watched that recently, and it was a great movie. It, it was a movie of mistaken identity, and they're, like, convicting this guy. And it's, like, very, almost kind of serious. It's a very straightforward Hitchcock film where, like, there's not even really, like, a huge twist in it. And yet, it's very enjoyable. It's based on a real story. Um, Yankee Doodle Dandy, uh, holy crap, like, James Cagney in Yankee Doodle Dandy, like, makes that movie so enjoyable, it, it's, it's outdated, but just him alone makes that movie so, like, like, I, I would watch it again just to watch him, because he is just that good in the film. Um, well, there you go, updated the list, of course this is the first film on the list can't believe that there's a movie from 1902 that's just like that is incredible and for something that's weird as this you would think the only thing that they have is the filming of people in the garden which is a movie that's like the actual first movie ever shot if i if there might have been something before but i believe the actual first film ever shot was just like it's pe it's like people at a party in like the very late 1800s and it's outside of a garden it's like a one second film and uh, you would think that would be the, even in like 1902, that would be the only thing that would exist is just like weird kind of like, it would have been really expensive home videos that only last a second, but it would be that it would just be like home videos, the quality of like a home video of just people recorded, uh, doing things. And yet they have something like this from 1902, something that is still so influential, um, it's basically the entire inspiration for the film Hugo. So, just incredible. Oh, and you know, now I realize I was, I was going to mention Hugo's like 10 years old this year. And I, I've been thinking about maybe doing a video on it. Uh, yeah, they do have some of the controversial work in here as well, but they got, they got everything. Um, I, I don't know if I've talked about this one before. I, I basically have said, you know, don't, don't watch it. Like there's just better movies. Like people have mentioned that D.W. Griffith, like he... I, I I don't know. He popularized a lot of popularized. I, it's hard to say that word for some reason when I've been talking for 22 minutes straight. <laughs> but he made a lot of the uh, styles and filming techniques popular. But I don't think he was the pioneer of them. I mean, man, if you if you want to go back to a guy who is not really controversial like him, or at least made a controversial film like him, I would just go to Melies, honestly. Um, I'll just skip out on this crap. Uh, I, I did, I did mention that like the first half is technically less offensive than the second half, but it's still like a very overly long movie. Um, this is, I've always been interested in seeing, but if you see that runtime, 440 minutes, this is like essentially what the first TV show that ever existed. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Intolerance, DW Griffith. Uh, this is one that people say to go watch instead of Birth of a Nation. Um, I'm not going to go through every page of this book, by the way. I do have this ordered from Kino, though, so we'll be giving that a watch. Um, but yeah, just giving you an idea of like what this book is like. And um, But yeah, I just remember when I was mentioning that like Hugo is 10 years old this year. This book is almost 10 years old, which is shocking to me. can't believe I've had it in my life for that long. Um, but, you know, it's just uh, I keep working at it. You know, I've been working at that IMDb top 250 list, so it's just, I've seen this, by the way, so I'm going to go find that quick. I don't think I had that marked off, but anyway, it's, uh, this video's already gone on for way too long. I, I, it, it was probably pretty boring, but, and I have it, I did have it marked off, so never mind. And here's a case where I don't think they actually put both titles, you know, like, because this actually has... A different language title itself but for some reason it doesn't let me see what the name of the oh wait a minute so i gotta look in the d's i might have actually marked this off already but yeah so that makes it even more confusing when the first letter is a different letter but it's the same title for the same movie in a different language um and then they have it on the list twice so yeah i didn't have it marked off um yeah what the heck? That is so confusing. Anyway, sorry for this overly long video, but uh, I do technically recommend this book um, just because I think it's an awesome thing to have, but really as like a useful tool to discover the films. Uh, it's got some good write-ups. 
Um, but if you want a better way to catalog what you've watched, I would just stick to letterbox. Anyway, I'm going to be heading to my letterbox list now to make sure I have seen Total Recall. And if I haven't, I immediately going to make sure I finally watch it. Cause for some reason I feel like I've seen most of it already and haven't actually, actually seen it, but maybe I have.